Uh, next, we've got uh, Ryan Barrett. A, some of you may know as Snarfed on the channel. Uh, also in Slack, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Same alias. Yeah, uh, IRC. Yeah, IRC. Cool. Who's going to give a presentation that uh, is a bit of a surprise? So. Mostly just because I've been lazy and haven't advertised much yet. <laughs> All right, give me just a minute to uh, hook up. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for the introduction, Tontech. Uh, I'm Ryan. Uh, I'm snarf.org. Uh, that's my site. Um, and uh, if you've heard of me, you've probably heard of me because of Bridgie, which is uh, the service. Thank you for the uh, shout out, Lily. Um, service I, uh, I built and run with some contributions from other talented people. Uh, that sends comments, retweets, RSVPs from social networks back to your website uh, and does some other stuff. Um, uh, so the first thing I'll say, if you don't take anything else away from what I'm saying today, um, I would say please donate to the IndieWeb. Uh, you're already doing a ton by being here and being part of the community, and you know uh, that's huge, and everyone's in different situations. But if you have the means, um, please donate, uh, especially so this open collective uh, site that Aaron has set up. Uh, it's a great way to do recurring donations, which go a lot more, you know, a lot further to make this kind of thing sustainable and you know, help us uh, and him run the wiki and all the other stuff we do. So... Um, uh, yeah, and also I'd like to uh, thank Aaron and Tontech for hosting and organizing, and Aaron for inviting me to speak despite not knowing anything about what I'm going to say. So I'll see if I can, <laughs> I'll see if I can earn back that trust a little. But we have a round of applause for them. Thank you all. So um, I've been hacking on uh, a little new project in free time and my kind of indie web time. Uh, which consists mostly of you know 15 minutes on the train to work, 15 minutes on the train back from work, and occasionally an hour or two in the evening. So um, you know it's, there's not a lot here, but it's something, and I'm uh, I'm excited about it. And I haven't talked about it a lot yet, so uh, I'm excited to tell you more. So if you have been around, pretty much all of you have seen a diagram like this before. You know, on the left is how things are now with social networks and other services. It's centralized. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do. But it all goes through a central mediator, and there are a lot of drawbacks to that. On the right side is how we are building things to work in the indie web and a number of other these decentralized communities where we do things much more, you know, point to point so between individual people, not nearly as much central mediator. Great. There are some things that are hard to do centralized. Um, you know, these are some examples. Uh, we have been working on them, and we have some great stabs at them. And you know, we don't even have to do them centralized. We can do them federated. We can have multiple options. Um, we've taken some good stabs at these. There are some that we haven't really done much yet. Um, you know, Social Graph is a good first example. Um, we're doing a, a little, so I'll get back there in a minute. Um, but I said, OK, well. I would like to, as a systems engineer, you know, doing something centralized, uh, taking something centralized and doing it decentralized, that's kind of one of the things that appeals to someone like me. So I figured, okay, let me see if I can give this a shot. So how do I build something new? Uh, how do we build something new? There are kind of two big ways you can do it. One is you build something new, literally, and you got to get people to come adopt it and use it and sign up and that kind of thing. It's fine, and you know we've done a lot of that uh, in Indie Web. You know, new protocols, as you heard, new services like Indie Auth. Um, it takes usability understanding. It takes product design. It takes community development, marketing. I'm not great at any of that. It's not for me. I mean, we have some really talented people here who do that kind of thing, and I have a huge amount of respect for them because those are truly hard problems. Um, and I don't tilt at those windmills so much. So the other way we have built things here and the, the way I thought about building this was to go use what's already there. IndieWeb does this a ton. Again, you know, HTML with microformats. Um, you know, individual people's websites. People had websites long before there were IndieWeb-specific technologies or even maybe the idea. Um, so that's what I figured I would try, hopefully. And so I thought about this and said, yeah, I mean... Everything is already there. Everything you have seen today, people are already linking to each other. You know, not to say, not necessarily to say this person is my friend or I'm following this person. We do have that. This is, you know, those have been around for a while. This is faux for XFN. But much more in an emergent, emergent sense, people are linking to a post and saying, here, I'm replying to this post. I, I like this other photo. I'm RSVPing to this event. The links are there. It's the web. All we have to go do is look at them, right? Uh, and you get this much more emergent kind of granular, organic uh, social graph. 
we're already even doing this. This is not, you know, I, I didn't make this up, uh, come up with this idea. It's not new. People like Colin are putting up uh, pages like this directory. He takes everyone who has sent him a web mention, and they're on this uh, on this page. Other people have these, too. I think there are even plugins for some CMSs. Great. The next step was, okay, if I want to go look at these links and start to build something like a social graph, where do I go get them? Um, you know, I could go build my own web crawler and run it or set one up and run it. It sounds like a lot of work. I'm lazy. Fortunately, there's this uh, service called the Common Crawl. Uh, they do a big web crawl uh, monthly and publish uh, the crawl data. Um, every month they will put out two to three billion pages. Uh, it's all publicly freely accessible. Awesome. So even better, uh, there are projects that are built on top of it that go look at microformats uh, and other things and say, hey, in all these web pages, what do we see? You know, what's in there? Uh, so they've done some great data on all of that. Um, so there's a bunch of great stuff here that I could use. Next question is, okay, if I'm going to go look at uh, a big crawl and find the indie web pages, which ones are indie web? We've talked about this a little in IRC and other places. Um, in spirit, and you know, I, I would say this, I think many people would agree in a sense. Anyone who's using their personal website or company or group as their primary online identity is pretty indie web in spirit, right? I think that's important to say. Uh, and this is why we are all here. In practice, I'm writing code, I gotta go look at HTML, I need something that I can put into code. Spirit doesn't translate so well to code. Uh, I don't know if anyone's tried, I, I haven't tried yet. So uh, I made up this criteria, you know, this is just why I was thinking about for this project. If you have Microformats 2, or if you support WebMention, or if you support Micropub, I'm going to say you're IndieWeb and look at you in this project. Okay, so I've got the crawl data, I've got a way to look, great. So I went and did this over the April 2017 crawl, two and a half billion pages, something like that. Um, found out it didn't work so well. Um, yeah, I spent 50 bucks to discover that, so not a huge amount of money, but yeah, it was noticeable. Um, the problem is it's incomplete, badly incomplete in a number of ways. So the April 2017 crawl, for example, has five pages, I think, from Tontech.com. He has a few more posts than that. <laughs> um, worse, so this is Jacquard's similarity between each of the crawls. Um, the most similar, you know, the set of URLs in each month to the next is 0.72, so like two-thirds to three-quarters. They switch around a lot. Um, you know, it's, their goal is breadth, not depth. Um, you know, they had a few pages from Tontech site, a number of other sites I looked at, indie websites that I cared about weren't in there at all. So, crap. Okay, well, back to the drawing board. I stepped back a little and said, well, uh, you know, I come from, again, systems engineering. I've worked at big companies. I'm used to going and doing, you know, run stuff on servers. But you don't have to. I mean, this thing here is a decent computer. I have a decent internet connection at home. Could I just go crawl them all? That, that also sounds like a bad idea, but I have poor judgment, so I said, what the hell, let's try it, you know? <laughs> so I was inspired by this uh, post some of you may have read called Taco Bell Programming. Uh, his site is sadly offline now, but archive.org has it. Um, it's a great post. Uh, it talks about how Taco Bell is this kind of amazing company. They make a bunch of different dishes from eight ingredients total, just in all different forms and shapes and uh, kind of combinations. You can do the same thing. I mean, Unix and the Unix tools have lived forever, and they're amazingly powerful. Uh, so you, like, you really don't necessarily have to go build something big and new for everything you want to do. So yeah, uh, 10 line shell scripts, web crawler, yeah, again, sounds like a bad idea, I got poor judgment, let's go try it. <laughs> so this is my uh, 10 line shell script web crawler. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, literally it's the bottom section, the top section, well, so the bottom part is the, uh, the w get, the top part is the xargs, um, some of those lines wrap, it may be as many as 15 lines, you know, I apologize, I'm not the best programmer. Um, but yeah, that's my little uh, Taco Bell web crawler. Uh, true, but, you know, 80 characters as God intended, I will say. <laughs> so, the next thing I have to do with this web crawler is go get the, web, the, the sites I'm going to crawl. So, fortunately, we have a few lists. Uh, you log into the wiki with your domain. Thank God for that. Thank you, Aaron, and everyone else for making that work. So, I uh, went and scraped 1,500 sites off the wiki. Uh, fortunately, I run Bridgie, uh, pulled another 1,500 or so uh, sites off of that. These are the sites, any site that Bridgie has ever sent a web mention to. 
And I grabbed a few more from webmention.io. Thank you again to Aaron. Um, so I got a list of sites. I got a, you know, probably bad web crawler. Let's go try it. And here is that crawl. Uh, so I ran this crawl in and uh, you know, on and off over a f couple months. Um, I like to measure it by the fan speed of my computer over that time. <laughs> So okay, so we got to you know pretty recently. I have a crawl, and so uh, I think the first thing I would say, learning here uh, or reinforcing, is man, the web is this ugly, bad, problematic place. Um, this is just this is the list of you know ignore the comment. This is the list of regular expressions to uh, stop crawling certain URL patterns. There were you know a bunch of different problems: infinite loops, uh, low value pages, uh, randomly generated pages. Uh, thank you all for doing interesting, unusual things with your websites. Uh, Tontek will <laughs> will appreciate this. He uh, he loves doing this kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, at the end of the day, though, I crawled them and I got some data. So we have 2,300 sites in this data set, uh, almost 6 million um, pa HTML pages, 380 gigs of raw HTML, 600 million-ish links. Most important thing is the bottom part. So that diagram uh, way back at the beginning, the decentralized one with links between sites, um, we have 700,000 of those pairwise links between two sites, one way or the other. That's some good raw data for a social graph. Awesome, let's go do it. So yeah, and some other details we can uh, go into later. Um, but there was also some interesting stuff. Uh, man, some really cool sites that aren't we don't think about as much, but that are part of the indie web. Uh, I won't go through the whole list, but Museum Digital, man, online catalog of 84 museums, 34,000 museum artifacts, all marked up with H entry, a bunch of H cards, some other stuff. There's some cool stuff out there that's not necessarily like spending their Saturday or Sunday here, but doing indie web stuff. Yeah. We were doing something, uh, building a social graph. So we got this raw data. Let's go do it. So I went and wrote a little code and crunched this and ended up with some derived or processed data for each of these sites. This is a bunch of kind of you know, metadata or information about each site. This is, you know, we can go through it. It's not that interesting, though. Um, uh, some interesting things, I infer the server uh, collected kind of which microformats classes showed up anywhere on this site, that kind of thing. Uh, here's the meat of it. This is fun. So for each site, I have um, you know, a number of links out from that site, a uh, number of links in from other sites in the data set to that site, and then each one, uh, you know, each one broken down by domain, uh, this link section. Sorry. Um, so uh, this is from my own website. So I have 6,700 links to IndieWeb.org, um, you know, 47,000 from, and I think that is... You know, it overcounts by some degree, but uh, there's some details there we can get into. And then you generate a score. You say, okay, based on this number, you know, this is pretty high up there. Kyle WM, Word.io, Ben site. Um, these links are also broken down by microformat class because I think some kinds of links, so replies or RSVPs, are more meaningful than others, right? Mentions. Uh, and so all of that goes into taking, yeah, is taken into account when we build this score. And here's that score formula. I won't go through the math, but uh, the key points are, you know, outbound count more than inbound because you control who you link to. Um, certain types of links matter more than others, and you take the natural log because there's this huge distribution, and I want a reasonable breakdown getting it back to zero to one. So, cool. Okay, we have a social graph where we have some derived data. What can we do with it? So, live demos are always fun. Let's do a live demo. Um, <laughs> So this is, you know, part of the indie web social graph. Um, you know, this is who I'm calling elders, people who have been active in the community for a while. This is a few hundred people. It's kind of a hairball. I'm still working on the visualization, but uh, Kumu's pretty cool. You know, you can uh, hover over someone, see just the people they link to, uh, and it includes all that metadata. So let's look at uh, Tontex. Um, so you got the description. We got a bunch of details. Here are some servers that serve his pages. Uh, some other stuff. Uh, so the other cool part, um, so this is all of you. So everyone who has RSVP'd, who RSVP'd to come here and included their website, this is you all. Uh, and we can go wander around. I'll post the links a little later. You all can go play with this yourselves. Uh, to be clear, I didn't build this tool. This is something called Kumu. Uh, I'm just using it. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here, and you can change the layout. You can do some fun stuff. So, um, nice. Lily. How do we change the fast path in there? What would be the 
Ah. Um, yes, so it's all in the docs I'll show in a minute, but uh, it inferred from, it pulled from H card and H card, then open graph, then Twitter card. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I want to get through the rest of the stuff while I have time. So, uh, but yeah, there, that was fun. Um, so, okay. So we got a social graph. Good stuff. Yeah, like, I mean, there's a lot more we can do, but, you know, as a maybe first pass, we can, you know, stick a check on that and say, ah, okay, that's something. Are we done? Uh, I mean, maybe, but I got all this data. Data's kind of fun. You can do stuff with data. What else could we do with data? So let's do some more with data. Fortunately, data mining was one of the other things we said maybe is hard to do decentralized, but now that we've got it in one place, let's go do some data mining. So... I threw all this raw data into BigQuery, which is a, you know, non, uh, a database, basically a data warehouse from Google, which is a database that's designed for data mining instead of application serving. So, uh, and again, this is free, publicly accessible. I'll show you all where to go get it in a minute. Uh, there are a few key pay, uh, tables here. So pages is, you know, one row per HTML page. Um, we got, again, you know, 5.7 million of those. Uh, sites is each site, one row per site. 2300-ish. Uh, so you can go type in SQL. Uh, so we can do something like count star from pages. Uh, live demos are always fun. Run that query. And it should tell us again 5.7 million. Great. We can do something like distinct domain. Make sure we don't have any duplicates. We should end up with 2,300-ish. Great. Actually, there may be a couple duplicates in there. So all this is in a database. You can go easily query it. Nice. The more interesting stuff is, again, since this community is not about developers, not about writing code, a lot of people are going to go do, you know, could go do great data mining on this data set without n needing to write SQL or knowing SQL. So turned up this uh, business intelligence BI tool called Metabase. Again, I didn't write these services, I'm just using them, but we can go um, query this stuff just by GUI. So let's go look at, uh, you know, again, that query we just did. So uh, distinct domain. So remember, distinct values of domain. That should give us the same number, which was, I believe, 2304. Yeah, data science. Uh, not a data scientist. Great. Okay. So we can do more, though. Uh, I'm going to throw in a, you know, a pre prepared query just because, you know, for the purposes of time. Yep. Okay, so let me go grab this. So what are we doing here? So this, we're looking at Realme values. I want to know people who put Realme links on their website, how many of them have Realme links to Facebook versus Twitter versus other sites? So we select basically the domain from the Realme links, and we go down and we say, okay, well, a lot of Twitter, a lot of GitHub, some Google Plus, surprising amount of Google Plus, considering, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, but I already see a problem with this query, so I'm not uh, pulling off the dub dub dub. So uh, there's both like Facebook.com and dub 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 Facebook.com in there. So let me fix that. And so you know we go do something like instead of the full host name, I just want the pay level domain, basically the domain below the TLD. So I can change that, and now we should get a better breakdown that will kind of put them all together. Cool. Okay. Only the, the high, you know, the pay level domain. So Facebook is all together. More importantly, you know, text, meh, I can go visualize this. Nice. All right. So now we see a little more usefully there's Twitter, GitHub, Google, Facebook will, will be next. But probably the best visualization for something like this is a row chart. Uh, so nice. And this is all GUI. You can do it with SQL, you can do it without SQL. So now we can go do some data mining. So let's go back and do some data mining. So first, you know, what are the sites here? Uh, again, you know, this, these are similar to what we showed before. Uh, Huff Duffer, man, ton of Huff Duffer pages. I didn't even get it all. I mean, it's like it trailed off, but it was going to take unclear if I was ever even going to get to the end. Um, so I have 315,000 of like 400 something thousand uh, podcasts on on Huff Duffer pages. Um, Museum Digital, man, that site is awesome. Uh, let's see, Felix's site. A few people here made it onto this uh, top 20 list. I think Ben's in there, Aaron's in there. So, yeah, uh, that's interesting. 
What about TLDs? Uh, lots of people are on .com, and uh, remember, the, so the y-axis here is power, uh, power log, so this isn't quite proportional, but .com is big, .net, a lot of German indie web people, a uh, fair number of Brits, uh, so TLD is okay. Uh, what's, man, there were some fun domains. Um, Apollo Guru, I don't even know what that means. Papa Ninja, uh, After My Own Heart, Save This Space, Jesse Likes Coffee is maybe my favorite. Um, so for you all working on microformats and uh, pro protocols, W3C stuff, how many people are using which microformat class? Um, so, counting the number of pages they show up on, H entry is the biggest, uh, then H card and H feed, and it trails off. Counting by number of sites is a little different. Almost every site who that has microformats has both H card and H entry, and then you go down and you, know, you count a little. But these are interesting. So, if you've seen a pattern here in these graphs, if you ever wondered what shape the internet is, maybe there are a few shapes, but really the ZIF curve is the shape of the internet. If we go back, I mean, it's all the same shape, right? This one's, you know, turned on its side, but it's all the same shape. So, I kind of love this diagram. Uh, so, one other, or a couple other interesting ones. Um, rel link. So, this is kind of a breakdown of, you know, how many of these sites use those different technologies we were talking about. Um, Web mention, so both WordPress and Known advertise with Web mention and WebMention.org. So, um, but yeah, Web mention, Web mention is the biggest uh, under Realme, um, and then uh, authorization, Micropub. So okay, man, the last one. Uh, I'll I'll get out of your hair in a minute, but then the last one that was interesting. Okay, for all the pages with Realme links, how many Realme links do they have? Um, you know, most of them should have a few, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so this is, um, you know, uh, of these, well, so I should say, how many sites have a page with a certain number of Realme links? So uh, lots of them have a site with just one, or a page with just one. You know, lots have a site, a page with two. Um, it trails off. But what I love is the x-axis here. There are sites that have two, over 200 Realme links on a single page. I... <laughs> I mean, this one was one, and this is a uh, this website's got some character. This, I mean, some of them have a Realme on every single internal link inside their website, which is funny. Uh, I don't know. I mean, to each their own. I will uh, give Chris a bit of a hard time. He's not here in person, but he's another one of these. He has 177 on this page. Uh, <laughs> entertaining. <laughs> so, yeah, fun stuff. So, okay. So, you know, we went and crawled the web from our home computer on a home internet connection. We built a little social graph and visualized it. We did some data mining. This was kind of fun. You know, like, are we done now? Maybe. You know, in 15 minutes on the train twice a day on the weekdays, I only get so much done. So I'm excited to uh, launch this today. Uh, I'm excited for you all, you know, Aaron, Tontag, everyone else, you all for listening, giving me the opportunity. So this is at IndieMap.org. Um, you can go play with that visualization, um, use the raw data, use all these tools. It's public and free. Um, it has problems. Um, this is not perfect by a long shot. The, the biggest problem is, as a community, is this kind of work our top priority? No, yeah, probably not. Uh, we need to do community development. We need to work on usability, product design, um, polish. I'm a systems engineer. You know, If I'm going to do this as a fun side project, this is the kind of thing I do. I apologize for going and spending bandwidth on stuff that's not the community priority. But hey, <laughs> um, I'm not self dog fooding this yet. I'm planning to, hoping to tomorrow. Uh, I don't yet have a use case for this on Snarfed, but I'll find one. Um, it's incomplete. It's only 2,300 sites. There are way more indie web sites than that, both in spirit and in practice. Um, it's static. You know, I can go update this with another crawl in a quarter or a year. It'll be a lot quicker now that everything's built, but still. Finally, man, uh, the data's dirty. I've cleaned it up a fair amount, but it's still a little dirty. Um, but yeah. So I would say there are a couple of things that reinforced in my mind as I was building this. Um, you will all know the famous information wants to be free quote from Stuart Brand. I would propose a corollary, data wants to be dirty. <laughs> if you have ever worked with data, you know this. Uh, and I, what I would say is don't feel bad, don't worry, it's not a problem, it is the natural state of data, dirty. You know, it's The more data you get, the dirtier it is in, in all different directions. Just be ready for it, manage it, clean it, but expect it, it's okay. And then otherwise, uh, I mean, we were talking about this a little yesterday. There's a great Peter Norvig quote, all code is liability. Um, every line of, I mean, we use code for everything. It's powerful. Like, we, you know, we need it, we love it. 
but every line of code you write has bugs, has security holes. Uh, you have to maintain it. If someone comes back in a year and has to read it, or you have to reread it in a year, you have to re-understand it. Code is great, but it is not results. Focus on results. Uh, code is a great tool to get you there. But this project, I mean, has a few hundred lines of code. This was a data project, not a code project. So, um, yeah, code is great, but it's not results. Focus on results. Uh, and talk about programming. God, I love it. You know, Unix is good stuff. So finally, I want to say thank you all. You know, IndieWeb has been a great playground for me to play in the last few years and do projects like this. Um, and that's largely because of you all for being that community. So um, thank you. And finally, donate to IndieWeb.